Hi, I thank you for joining this presentation about the Stress Autism Mate, Innovation in Mental Health Care. We will first tell you about the app, the Stress Autism Mate, followed by the journey we took to develop SAM for adults with autism. But first, let's introduce ourselves. Hi, my name is Kirsten, and I sometimes experience stress when I need to resubmit a research article for review. My colleague's name is Jamie, and he can experience stress when he needs to reschedule appointments in order to, well, to fit everything in his schedule. But first, I would like to talk to you about stress, stress and autism, and the self-management app SAM. To start with stress. Stress is often portrayed as a negative or fact or symptom, while stress is an essential part of our lives. As you can see in this chart, I'll get my pointer, stress can be dynamic and can be a very positive thing. Well, when I look at myself right now, I hope to be in this green area and have an optimal performance. But secretly, I may be just over the edge to yellow because, of course, this presentation comes along with some stress. Sometimes you can experience a lot of stress, which can also lead to physical complaints such as a full head, palpitations or concentration problems. But it, it does not immediately lead to a burnout. When experiencing stress, it is important to apply a coping method that lowers the stress level and to rest after this stressful experience so that the stress level can recover to the plateau phase. So I hope we agree that stress is a necessity. It is important to understand your own stress manual to know which coping method will work for you to lower the experienced stress. It is important to find your own balance, to let stress help you in productivity or in a flight or fight situations, and then take your recovery time after such an event. Stress becomes unhealthy when it becomes chronic. And stress becomes chronic when the balance of stress is lost. For example, when there is no time to recover or you apply an insufficient coping mechanism. There are also some groups of people who are already more vulnerable to experience a lot of stress, such as people with an autism spectrum disorder. People with an autism Spectrum disorder experience more daily stress compared to people without autism. This is partly due to a different stimuli processing in the brain, which makes the brain more sensitive to stress. In addition, uh, people with autism may also have difficulty recognizing stress and applying adequate coping mechanisms. Scientific research showed that 38% of people with autism experience sleep deprivation and 40% have comorbidities such as an anxiety disorder, HCG, or a depressive disorder. Current treatment of stress, including in people with autism, focuses on stress signaling schemes. This means that you write down in a diagram with traffic light colors, green, yellow, orange, and red, which stress signals are present and, and in which phase what to do with them, the coping mechanism. To successfully complete this treatment, it is important that the user initially recognizes stress and then uses this stress signaling scheme. But exactly that is the problem, well, the limiting factor uh, in people with autism because they have difficulties with recognizing the stress in the first place, as I told before. So clients of Emer Heese, the Autism Spectrum Center uh, of GGZ Centraal, asked for a more suitable method to recognize stress, gain insight in their stress, and apply adequate coping mechanisms. In response to this question, we developed the Stress Autism Mate app, the SAM app, in close collaboration with these clients with autism and in collaboration with uh, Tino. Before we move on with this presentation, it is important for you guys to have an, an idea of the, of the SAM app. And I can tell you a lot about, about it, but it will be a bit abstract. So I suggest we first look at a short introduction video about Sam, and then you can get an impression of the app. Mensen met autisme 
ervaren vaker stress en het kost ze meer moeite om stress te herkennen en te verminderen. Dit heeft grote invloed op hun dagelijks functioneren. Daarom is het voor hen belangrijk stress tijdig te leren herkennen en persoonlijke patronen te ontdekken. Dit is Sam. De app die je helpt stress tijdig te signaleren en persoonlijke tips geeft hoe je met stress om kunt gaan. Dit doet Sam door de juiste vragen te stellen. Sam laat je vier keer per dag nadenken over de stressmomenten van de afgelopen vier uur. Sam stelt dan vragen over stresssignalen en uitgevoerde activiteiten. Bijvoorbeeld, voelde je je prikkelbaar of had je last van een vol hoofd? De antwoorden op die vragen gebruikt Sam om het stressniveau te bepalen. Hiervoor zijn rekenregels opgesteld. Sam laat je direct weten wat je stressniveau is en daarbij geeft Sam je tips om eventuele stress te verlagen. Dit zijn persoonlijke tips. Uniek aan Sam is dat mensen met autisme zelf om deze app hebben gevraagd en dat ze intensief betrokken zijn geweest bij het ontwikkelen van de vragenlijst, de rekenregels en de tips. Het taalgebruik en de vormgeving zijn ook steeds met hen afgestemd. SAM is wetenschappelijk onderzocht door GGZ Centraal en TNO. De resultaten laten zien dat gebruikers hun eigen stress beter kunnen verminderen en minder stress ervaren. Er vindt een verbetering plaats van de kopingvaardigheden en gebruikers rapporteren een positiever zelfbeeld. Gebruikers zijn enthousiast en ervaren al dagelijks de toegevoegde waarde van SAM. Met deze wetenschappelijk onderzochte app krijgt ieder persoon met autisme een persoonlijk, interactief stresssignaleringsplan. SAM, weerbaar tegen de stress van vandaag en morgen. Why did we develop this app? Well, as I mentioned before, our cl clients with autism asked for an intervention in which they could use for themselves like a self-help tool. And um, there are, are, of course, the societal needs for personalized self-help tools. So all well, this was just a match for the right app like the SAM app. As mentioned in the video, SAM prepares a questionnaire four times a day for users with questions about the activities of the past four hours and how they went, followed by seven indirect stress questions, such as, do you have too much on your mind? The app calculates a stress level and verifies it with the user. And finally, the user receives personal stress reducing advice. And there's also a function in the app with an overview like this. I hope you can see it. Um, in which the user can see how they scored over the week or over the day. And um, well, you can have a look at it and ask yourself, well, what did I do when I was in the red phase? So in brief, Sam generates an overview of the calculated stress levels in a chart over a daily and weekly basis. And this overview chart creates kind of insight in the ups and downs re related to the stress in daily life. People can have a look at it if like going grocery shopping is a stressful event and maybe adjust how they do that. I can hear you thinking, well, nice to have a self-help tool again or an app, um, but there are, are already so many, but why does the SEM app, well, is it better or is it, does it really work? Well, I think that's a really good thought um, since there's an awful lot of mental health apps and only a small part of the available apps have been studied for effectiveness. So in that, in, you know, in that thought, we conducted several studies with the SAM app, starting with a pilot study, followed by a larger single case experimental design study and a qualita qualitative study into the user experience, which is now being analyzed. 
Because of the time, I would be happy to discuss the results of the second study with you guys. This single case experimental design study had 36 particip participants with, an, um, with autism, of course, and it was an effectiveness study with outcome parameters as stress de detection, coping skills, quality of life, resilience, and finally stigma. The setup was as follows. The questionnaires were administered four times over a period of uh, three times four weeks. I'll get my point to point it out. So the first four weeks consisted of treatment as usual, functioning as kind of a control phase. This was followed by a four week intervention phase in which the users uh, used the Zen app and afterwards was followed by uh, well, the follow up phase with treatment as usual. Um, so and in the switch of all those phases, we conducted the, the questionnaires uh, with the outcome parameters. Now, finally, with the results, uh, we analyzed the data with a multi-level analysis, which um, where each participant is their own control person and the built-in control phase as usual in a SCAD. Um, well, there were a lot of significant positive results in many areas, um, but I think it's more important now to discuss the well, most important outcomes. The main outcomes that improved in both the short term, so directly after using SAM and after follow-up, were reduction in perceived stress, an improvement in coping skills on several fields, and we saw an improvement in self-esteem. And the resilience also improved. After the scientific research was done, we have been busy. The SAM app has been available for free since May 2021 and can be also be downloaded in Belgium since April this year. At the moment, we have about well 2,200 daily users. We manage our own help desk. The app has been tested by Orca and described as a non-medical advice. And in addition, the security, uh, data security is strictly personal and it meets the requirements for a medical app, um, which also st stores the data in the Netherlands. And well, with the SAM app, we have, well, it's not yet finished with self-managing apps as the key to a better life. We are setting up a platform platform for stress signaling apps as well, and we call it STOP. Uh, under which other self-managing apps, for example, for anxiety can, disorder, can run. At the moment, we are busy developing Sam Junior, the youth version version of Sam. In transition from Sam to Sam Junior, we discovered different wants and needs for this new target group. The app is now more flexible. The daily questionnaires will be longer available to fill out, and the user can now choose whether it wants to fill out the questionnaire two, three, or four times a day. We included other standard activities and tried to make it more personalized. In, in this way, we try to, well, to um, meet the, the questions and the, the wants and needs from the user. So, because they are the people who, want, who will use our app. Hello, my name is Amy Niebakker. I'm um, a psychologist for people with autism spectrum disorder at the same mental health care institution as Kirsten works at, uh, GGZ Centraal. Um, and besides that, I spend most of my time uh, as a project manager within uh, the Stress Autism Aid team. Um, so now you might be thinking that sounds like a nice app, um, client participation and inclusive design and all, and great that you've done all this, but how am I supposed to do this? How are you going to teach me? <laughs> how to implement inclusive design and client participation when designing for neurodiverse audiences in just 15 to 20 minutes. How am I going to make something that is wanted and needed by said target audience and have it be user-friendly? Well, I'm not. Unfortunately, I won't be able to do that today, but what we're going to try to do is to inspire you and hopefully send you home with some useful advice and guidelines and perhaps even send you in your way with an idea of what or how you would want to approach inclusive design um, and neuro-friendly design in the future.
So the, we from the Stress Autism Aid team believe in the power of innovation by and for the target audience. So uh, client participation or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, a successful innovation within mental health care in our eyes starts and ends with the client. So I would like to take you through the process of how we've designed the Stress Autism Aid with our clients with ASD. So what is important when developing an app? Um, which steps are important to take and what should you take into account? So important to note here is whether you are experiencing a problem or is it a problem that is experienced by the target group? So um, what is missing according to the target audience? What does your target audience want to be tackled? Um, how do you find out? Simple, start a conversation. A neurodiverse client often knows very well how to point out what is missing in a treatment, in a treatment setting or in one's daily life. So two clients often know this even better and 10 clients even better than that and so on. Uh, so dive into conversation and when you're done with that, do it some more. <laughs> For example, set up an exploratory focus group and try to outline some problems and solutions, objectives and needs for your innovation. Um, we, as a mental health institution, collaborated with TNO, a major research institution that joined us in our research. Um, most of the knowledge about neurodiversity, innovative solutions, and inclusive design already exists. So don't try to reinvent the wheel. Of course, this probably is an advice you don't already know, but it's good to mention. For example, uh, we, as a mental health care team, have experience working with adults with ASD, but TNO has a lot of experience with large scale and solution oriented research. So this way we could combine their experience in setting up a scientifically backed design process and our knowledge of ASD specific etiquette to innovate and design for our neurodiverse target audience. When devising innovative solutions for target audience, especially neurodiverse target audiences, it is, as I already mentioned, very important to know what knowledge is already out there and to make use of it. Um, but it's also important to consider what solutions already exist. Make use of these successful innovations and learn from the lacking ones. A good example is Sideflix, a video platform for psychiatrists, psychologists, and other interested parties with webinars and accredited online training. Sounds kind of recognizable, and that's true because it's comparable to and works exactly like the well-known Netflix. So whether um, a solution for a problem is partially successful or unsuccessful, it's good to know and find out why this solution isn't being used with the target audience. So what might be missing or what could be done differently or better? For example, in the field of psychology, a stress signaling plant is used for stress signaling. It's a popular treatment tool to increase a patient's awareness of their stress levels. Um, a stress signaling plant is kind of like a traffic light graph with physical and mental stress indicators corresponding to different, different stress levels. Um, for example, the heart palpitations would correspond to red, to the color red and high stress levels and positive thoughts would uh, correspond to the color green and lower stress levels. Um, moreover, the different stress levels also include stress reducing advice in order to move from red to orange and from orange to green. But the question remained, if the target audience is designing this stress signaling plan together with mental health care institutions in the consultation room, why doesn't it appear to work? Or if phrased differently, the stress signaling plan, something that already exists, what is missing from it? What could be different or better? And two important points emerge from our conversation with people with ASD. Um, firstly, the stress signaling plan um, wasn't drawn up in the moment. Um, so it was determining the, the stress levels and stress signals was only done in the consultation room with their psychologists after two weeks. Um, and secondly, it was not easily available for users. So as simple as a piece of paper with a stress signaling plan on it seemed, 
as quickly they lost it or it was totally unused. Um, so we wanted to create something that measured in the moment and was easy to use and always available. Luckily, <laughs> your mobile phone is always close. So we started a solution-oriented, uh, scientifically-backed search for um, stress signaling, um, for a stress signaling solution for adults with ASD. And we went to work with TNO to create an app that should enable uh, adults with ASD to signal their stress and to help them handle it better. So through this process, we composed a list of guidelines um, for when you're designing an app for stress management or when you're designing for neurodiverse target audiences, and more specifically, when you're designing for adults with ASD. So it's important to note that we, as a team, um, considered uh, in the past and still consider designs that are applicable and user-friendly for people with ASD to also be applicable for most target audiences. And we think that this is mostly because of their strong need for a concrete and simple user experience. So we suggest the following. Um, we suggest for you to organize individual user sessions for of up to an hour in a trusted and quiet place. Um, this could be in a consultation room of a mental health care institution, for example. Um, secondly, we uh, advice to check specific wishes and etiquette of users before starting the designing process um, with their respective mental health practitioners. Uh, for adults with ASD, this meant preferring to not shake hands upon entering a room. Um, we also advise to clearly explain in advance what will happen and what is expected of the users and to not deviate too, too much from that. Um, for example, try to refrain from moving appointments. And you may think that this is only useful for people with ASD, but it provides structure and direction for your session, which is, uh, which is quite useful. Um, and we also advise to ask questions as concretely and specifically as possible, and to really try and find out what someone wants flow-wise. So what type of steps um, follow each other when they think about the solution. And uh, we advise to work with uh, words like so and if um, to determine what one sees in step separate steps in their mind. Um, and an appropriate follow-up question therefore could be, can you give an example? During the user sessions, we ascertained specific features and functions the app needed to have. Um, and according to the users, um, the app needed to ask them about their activities and how, they, uh, how those activities went for them. Um, it also needed to ask stress indicating questions and it needed to present the calculated stress level in an understandable manner. Um, while these user sessions enabled our team to do the following, uh, we retrieved a generic list of daily activities from users um, so what did a user do and how specific did these activities need to be phrased? How specifically um, did they need to be phrased within the stress questionnaire in the app? Um, we also retrieved the preferred language use of the users, of the target audience. Uh, we retrieved the stress indicators. Um, so we drafted stress indicating questions and we validated those questions. Uh, we retrieved stress reducing advice uh, so what did users do themselves to reduce their stress levels and we also validated these types of advice uh, this, this type of advice with other users um, and we drafted assumptions of the weight that needed to be added to the individual stress stress indicating questions in the questionnaire and finally we drafted calculation rules based upon those weights to have the app be able to actually calculate a user's stress level. Just as mentioned before, we also drafted general guidelines that you can follow when designing for adults with ASD. So do's, for example, include simple color usage, usage such as blue hues and grays, um, and don'ts include uh, using large chunk, chunks of text to explain uh, anything within the app. Um, in the case of the stress automate, we gathered the wants and needs uh, through the user sessions and went to work on developing a prototype version of the app. 
um, that could be tested by the users. Something like that can be really simple, for example, by creating a visual storyline with examples of the flow of your innovation, um, and then users can uh, ask questions about that. Or perhaps it could be a more physical version which users uh, can play with in reality. Uh, these prototypes are to be used to ascertain the outcome measures, so the content of the app. Um, and finally, after testing, uh, the final interviews, uh, final interviews were performed with users to specify more individual preferences. Uh, and this process is a never ending process. So a few weeks back, we actually sent out a questionnaire to stress autism age users to find out what they thought of some proposed changes to the app and to find out if they had any more wishes after using the app for a while. Um, hence, a new update is coming this summer that implements the outcomes of this questionnaire. In summary, a successful, inclusively designed innovation for a neurodiverse audience within mental health care starts and ends with the client. Thank you all so much for your attention. Uh, we're really sorry that we couldn't be here tonight. Um, and uh, we hope you enjoyed our talk. Uh, if you had any more questions, you can visit our website mentioned below, or you can send us an email at som at ggzcentraal.nl. So that's sam at ggzcentraal.nl. Okay, thank you so much.